You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome. This is Carol Ann Hamilton, and you're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, where you get, on this show, grounded and unique solutions about how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon. You know, I have to say, Unlike the typical content out there that's frankly found in freebie brochures and standard pamphlets, remember, we're trying to be conscious here rather than complacent or compliant caregivers. And in this case, conscious really means that we are ready, willing, and able to do some things to make a difference in our own caregiving situations. We don't believe, like the complacent caregiver, that aging parents will never happen to us or you're immune somehow because they've always managed in life and so you're sure that they will even as they age. Well, that's an illusion, as I've already pointed out in the past. Same thing with the compliant caregiver. Like if you just pick up enough of those freebie brochures and booklets and stuff, you'll figure it out on your own. Like you don't sometimes need some support and championship yourself from other than the written page. And that's why we're introducing today the second half of our 12 Keys to Elder Care Success. We've been focusing a lot over the past few weeks on the six loving attitudes, but here we're now talking about six focused actions. And for all of you who love to be doers out there, because you don't enjoy being in those attitude or mindset states too long, I think you'll love how I define actions, which is really advocate, clarify, trust, initiate, observe, and innovate. Now, let's just describe them a little bit before we go into it further. Advocate, yeah, you've probably heard advocacy on behalf of those whom you caregiver. Uh, In this case, I also want to add creating a safe environment where both parents say, can speak their truth around you, sometimes or often as their mediator. I know that I'm the product of a very domineering father who was opinionated and always thought that he was right. That had my mother kind of cower sometimes. I don't mean physically, but certainly emotionally or mentally, and everybody was just expected to go along with whatever Bill said, you know? Well, in this case, advocate is where you need to make sure that everyone's voice is heard in the mix, not just the dominating partner, say, out of the duo. That's advocate. Clarify. This one, everybody who's in business in some way with a job or even as an entrepreneur knows that what do you need to ask by way of questions? That's right open-ended, the typical open-ended as opposed to closed-ended, which get kind of a yes or no response, open-ended, you know, who, what, where, when, why, and how, but especially not so much the why, because it creates some offensiveness sometimes. We'll get into that as we go along. 
But certainly you do this clarification to bypass what can be some of the, uh, let's call them creative parental ploys that you might find. And the story that I have to share with you today about my dad's failed driving test, I think will be very illuminating in that regard. Maybe you've even observed that some elders can be about as sneaky as that teenager climbing down the back trellis. Meanwhile, they were supposed to stay in their room under curfew. Does anybody here with children, teenagers, relate to that one? Bet you do. How about trust, though? This one is not just what it sounds like. Trust is actually that things may be At that 30,000 foot level, if you look from there, they may actually be unfolding in very curious ways. I know the best example of this one for me was when my dad refused all of my help to support him inside and outside as the house was declining and he would have none of it. One of his famous barks was, don't touch my stuff. He would often holler and You know, I could not make any progress on the cleaning fronts whatsoever, no matter how much that was desperately needed. But once my mom passed away from a bunch of ailments, then all of a sudden he said, yeah, maybe I could use some help. So I had to trust that things were unfolding even beyond my opinions for him, if that makes sense. Now, initiate is very much about probably having to intervene in your folks situation at some point, because I know that if somebody asked me, Carol Ann, what do you consider to be amongst your top regrets or maybe even mistakes that you thought you made at the time when you were in the throes of the elder care marathon? I'd say I probably waited to initiate critical conversations like about driving hazards sooner. And so I would like to suggest with folks listening with us today that you'll probably have to intervene and there are many times when sooner than later is a good idea. To observe is the again the typical business skills of listening, watching body language, and also nonverbal mannerisms to either confirm or disprove your intuitive sense. Again, any of you who have children, you can tell in probably a nanosecond if they're fibbing right? Or if they're trying to avoid giving you a direct answer. Well, it's the same thing with aging parents, believe it or not. So we need to really use all of our senses if we're going to detect what's going on underneath the surface. And I did cheat, I admit it, on the N, because I have it stand for innovate. Constantly seek out-of-the-box solutions to stay one step ahead of your crafty elders, because you well know that if you are coping with uncopable parents, as nominated in my first book in this sphere, Loving Actions for Elder Care, you'll know that we're not really talking about the cooperative or the easygoing parent here. If, If all of the standard stuff really worked for you, you'd already be doing it, wouldn't you? I would say so. So we need some out of the box solutions. And early on, I read you a little bit of a list of A to Z actions or attitudes that will never get you the results that you need. I'm about to do the same thing for an A to Z of what will work. Some of it you may recognize, but even if you do, uh, it's always good to have a reminder. So let's go with this A to Z of the innovative solutions. Acknowledge them. In their essence, see who your folks are really are. Get to know who they are if you can, and there are ways to do that. Balance, yeah. Maintain your own center through it all. That's why we've been spending some time on your self-care and other techniques to help keep you strong and healthy. C is from compassion, and we're going to continue after our first short break that I will overview the rest of what I wanted to say about these focused actions. So stay tuned. And we are listening to the Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. 
There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, just before the break, I was starting to elaborate six focused actions that guarantee elder care success, even when you're dealing with the most unculpable or stubborn parent. And this could also apply to others you care give, like aging family members or friends or colleagues or even neighbors. Right. So we were talking about an A to Z list of actions and attitudes that will lead to the positive outcomes you presumably seek. And I had just gone through acknowledgement, balance and compassion. ABC. Now let's go for the D to Z. Determination, empathy, focus, gentleness, hope. Yes, that one does mean keep up the faith. Ingenuity. Joking, yeah, Jay, not at their expense, but offering almost a bit of sense of playfulness. We did a show a few weeks ago on laughter is still the best medicine. That's the one I'm going for here. Kindness, listening, mastery of self, not mastery of them. Did you get that? For N, nurturing, optimism, patience, questioning. Again, not questioning Uh, those whom you care give so much as the positive sense of showing sincere interest in them as human beings. Respect is important. Stamina will be called for. Thankfulness for what they sacrificed on your behalf. I know my, you know, stubborn to the 500% mark father really did sacrifice for me. Same thing with my challenging mother. So, you know, I try to look sometimes from that perspective, too. You brings us to understanding V for vulnerability. And this is more like a tenderness from within. I know you've had to barricade yourself often to deal with uh, these difficult matters, especially when there was abuse involved. So I'm not saying, oh, my gosh, open yourself back up. No, but I'm saying... Can you find your heart center and locate also for W some wisdom? X, always a difficult letter, so I call it extreme self-care. The yearning stands for to ease their burden in some way, because I know that is what you are really seeking beneath the surface. And finally, Zen for Z, bringing some calmness to the table. So as we go on today, we're going to explore those qualities even further, and that's going to start with a bit of a story that I call the failed driving test. 
as I go along, I'm going to invite you to think about how many of the six focused actions I had to employ to unwind my father's fibs, plus his desire to avoid his daughter's scrutiny. Oh, yeah. And we'll start the episode here and see how far, because it's a kind of a long tale, so get ready. And I call the at the failed driving test for evident reasons you'll see. It dates to November 2010. All I know for a fact is that something happened between the 1st and the 5th of that month. The 1st was a Monday, the 5th was a Friday, and on the Monday, my dad was supposed to undergo Ontario, Canada's process of every two years, you have to renew your driver's license for seniors who are over 80 years old. And this includes attending a safety lecture with a certified instructor, providing optometrist proof if you have a recent eye exam, and also completing a multiple choice written test. Notice that we did not say actual competence behind the wheel is required at this time, even now. I'll come back to that in a little bit because I do have some opinions about that state of affairs. any rate, when my dad and I chatted on Monday, which we were by then doing sometimes multiple times a day, I learned, much to my surprise, that 88-year-old father did not walk out with his official paper signed, sealed, and delivered. He had done so at the ages of 80, 82, 84, 86. I mean, this was a man who could, despite his bragging ways, justifiably claim an almost spotless record across 72 or so years of driving. He's from an era, 1922, when he couldn't wait to get his license. And he probably trotted out the family vehicle a few times even before he reached the age of 16. And he was always a really competent driver. In fact, you should know that he prided himself on a summer job that he had as a school teacher in his early career where he would drive engine mounts for a World War II plane called the Lancaster Bomber into a local factory to help support the war effort. Now, mind you, Bill was so boastful, he thought just doing that helped to win the war by itself. Okay, you can get kind of the nature of the man, can't you? So when he walks out without his papers in hand at the age of 88, You just know that something is afoot. And so I spent the intervening four days trying to figure out what the huh had happened. Because knowing my dad as I did, I can only figure two possibilities. Either he flubbed the written test or, (laughs) and this one makes me laugh to this day, uh, he was kicked out of the lecture. I rule out not having the proper eye exam paperwork because he really did attend to that very well. So, you know, I zoom in on my theories because he would have never permitted anything other than a high opinion of his driving prowess. In fact, he was opinionated about having a thing or two to teach that guy about driving who doesn't even own a vehicle for Pete's sake. He's talking about the the safety instructor. So I can readily envision my dad becoming so incensed at submitting a fifth time to a compulsory lecture because he really thought only unworthy peons need to do that, that maybe he was even expelled from class. Wow. Okay. Do you permit me the total roar I had in private (laughs) over a retired school principal being thrown out of the room because he was being argumentative. Don't you just love that? That one was good for about 15 minutes of belly laughs at the time. At any rate, short of 24-hour monitoring, which you're probably not prepared to do as the son or daughter of an unculpable parent, Some ability, though, to clarify what was really going on is called for. So do you wonder about how the rest of this story went in terms of some of the things that I had to to do to unwind it? Well, in the end, I determined the most reasonable explanation for the failed driving test 
I did this through careful listening and focused questions, like I said, but I think my dad flunked the exam. I'll never know to this day if they changed the methodology from a paper and pen to a computer. That would have intimidated the heck out of him because he didn't even own a computer or have internet in the house. Go figure. So here's how I did, you know, arrived at this conclusion because there were just too many suspicious little phone calls leading up to the big test day where he was talking about studying for the written portion, but there was no supporting evidence to prove that theory. In in fact, when we come back from our commercial break, I'll tell you what the man was doing instead of studying for his driving test. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. So welcome back, everyone, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. And just before the break, I was wrapping up the tale that I call my dad's failed driving test. And for the first time ever in over 72 years of successful driving, he flubbed somehow and didn't come out with his paperwork signed, sealed, and delivered. So that was disconcerting to the hilt for both him and me, because I think all of us can figure out as caregivers that driving is one of the last vestiges of freedom and independence for those seniors, right? That they can still get around and look after themselves. My dad was always a fiercely independent man and he prided himself on being able to trot out his his vehicles, you know, to do grocery shopping and so on. So this was very, very upsetting much as I make light of the fact that he probably was argumentative with the safety instructor and so on. Anyways, here's how I unwound the rest of that tale. Because although dad was claiming to be studying for his test, and I even possess the cue cards. You remember those little white lined cards that you used to use maybe to deliver a speech in school and stuff like cheat sheets? Well, he would take apart the driver's handbook, paste one on each cue card and just kind of review it as part of his study practice. So I know I have those, but that's not what he was doing leading up to the big test. Oh, no. Here's what he was actually doing. He was watching hockey. 
And I could tell that he was doing this because I, it's like I put on a Sherlock Holmes hat or something. And, you know, I figured out, gosh, he's smart. He's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. As any kid worth their salt would on an unsuspecting parent. Only in this case, the roles were reversed. So I suspect he was sort of balled out by the instructor or something happened. And so he put in a series of all-nighters in order to get a passing grade by the Friday. There are going to be other bill driving stories because that's not the last one that I have for you. Oh, no, siree, not on this subject, which is one of the top five, I would say, that many who are in an elder care situation have to face and confront. Now, as I further explain what I did beneath the surface, I invite you to think about which focused actions you think I needed to take. Advocate, clarify trust, initiate, observe, innovate. Well, I placed, you know, the story that I shared under the category of clarify, for sure. Clarify all communications. Because if I were to ask you, how confident do you consistently feel about receiving accurate and complete information about your parents' true state of affairs? What would I discover? Yeah, I thought so. You'd probably receive conflicting reports depending on what day of the week, sometimes what hour or minute you ask. And you only get the content that typically one of them in this case, my bossy dad, would want you to know. But there are other times where they kind of collude and get together and say, okay, let's not have Junior receive this or this or this information. They hide it from you. And so I'd say that clarity and the sleuthing skills of the finest detective were, you know, required It's like you need intelligence akin to the CIA or something. Good heavens. And not only the open-ended questions, but also do you see how some of the loving attitudes come into play here too? The N in loving was for neutrality, just to remind ourselves, because I needed to listen to my father's report of his version of the failed test story without getting hooked, without having my buttons pressed. And believe me, he used some pretty triggering language because it's not my experience that the instructors are there to punish you in some way, but they're trying to help you to pass your test. And I suppose that they're being supportive in those safety lectures. I'm not 80 yet, so I don't know, but I I give them absolutely that benefit of the doubt. So, you know, The avoidance he gave me and the downright fibs, for me anyway, were guaranteed to zoom my blood pressure off the charts if I had allowed it. Instead, I needed to bring grace under pressure. I needed to remember my intentions, which are to have supported him through this very difficult elder care chapter of life, and I did. So remembering those things made me have some compassion and understanding for the man because, again, it must have been very troubling and insulting, perhaps, that he did not make it through that one and only time in his entire life and driving career. I'd say observe. That's how I knew that from his tone of voice on the phone, for instance, I knew he was trying to skirt what actually happened. I know many of my coaching clients say, well, Carol Ann, can't I meet with you face to face? And sure, I do that when it's possible. But actually, through a medium like the, the microphone or the phone, you can hear more in tone of voice than sometimes is possible face to face. So I'm kind of glad I wasn't there with him in his home while we were having that conversation, because that's actually what allowed me to detect that something more was going on beneath the surface. So I'm treating this whole thing kind of like uh, a little case study. And I invite you to think about what Do you notice about what happened in that story? What do you notice about my father's behaviors? What does it bring up in you? 
What do you notice about how I combined several of the loving attitudes plus also the focused actions in order to get at the real heart of the matter? And I think that brings me to a little bit of an exercise I invite you into as well. You can just consider it while you're listening in on what we're talking about today. Which of, if I was to ask you, which of the focused actions would you say that you're already great at? Because there are some things that you're absolutely doing well, even if the show aims to you know, illuminate and enhance your, your toolkit. So, you know, let's, let's talk about that when we come back and then further the case study with a Dear Carol Ann letter. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, and you're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, jobsannex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes, and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Glad to have you back, everyone. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And just before our last break, we were starting to dissect the uh, the failed driving test and noticed how many of the loving attitudes I had to undertake in order to work through what really happened in kind of what my dad was trying to hide from me by way of the failed test and why did that occur, as well as the focused actions that we're concentrating upon today by way of advocate plus uh, clarify, trust, initiate, observe, and innovate. And I was starting to ask you to think about which of those six focused actions you believe that you're very good at yourself, like which one of those, if you had even one of them as a strength, because you are already doing some things well, what would that be? And in turn, there are always ways we can improve. I know that I had to continuously develop and grow myself to get through that chapter of life exploring, often by way of trial and error, mostly error, what didn't work in order to come to things that actually worked around even the most uncopable or difficult parent. So think about if there were one quality that you want to start strengthening in the doing realm, would it be advocate or clarify communications? Would it be to initiate conversations sooner or trust that things are unfolding as they are meant to, if you can adopt that higher level perspective? Never mind, observe and using all your skills around, 
you know, seeing, observing body language, listening to tone of voice, all those good things, and then innovate or getting really clever to catch some things like my dad, almost as though he was that teenager climbing down the, the trellis wall. So with that said, I've invited some reflection. And by the way, folks, I'm always here to receive your calls with questions or comments at one 451 1451 That's one 451 for, uh, and 1451, right? So, so please do that as I start to jump into a little bit of a Dear Carol Ann letter. I'm going to read it. And again, as I do so, reflect in the background about which focused actions do you think you would recommend to this lady who is called Sick and Tired. So here's how it reads. Dear Carol Ann, I'm 53 and have had a busy career as a teacher for 30 years. My students are like my children, my family. I felt good about making a positive difference with the next generation. My legacy is to have guided them to eventually become upstanding adults in their own right. Still, I'm tired of the daily grind. Kids nowadays sure have a lot of issues like anger, behavioral problems, bullying and abuse. It affects everyone. And now it seems my own mom has regressed to a troublesome teen. She's on my case every single night. So now I have no escape at all. I'm actually bitter about being expected to be her servant. Wouldn't you be if you were the one to do everything? That was three question marks there. My useless brother and sister don't help. They just shove mom's care on to me. Like, yeah, leave it up to good old lonely responsible Pat. So what if I don't have kids? I had a life. I've always pulled up the slack for everyone else. Well, I'm getting sick and tired of it. What can I do? And that's why she signs off in the way that she does. Yeah, you know, if I was chatting with Pat right now, the first thing that I would say to her is, and well, you ought to feel sick and tired. You have your every right. As Carol Ann, I'm saying to Pat, you know, I've been criticized by people already that say, well, you know, your parents did everything for you. How come, like, how come you can't, you know, step up to the plate for them? And I did. But I'm saying you can hear the accusation and especially often toward a daughter. I was just speaking with a client the other day and we said, wow, like, are we part of the bad daughters club or something? Wow. Anyway, so please, Pat, allow yourself to feel as you do. It is a key to your healing. And you can see in this reference to the family dynamics, right? Shoving mom's care onto her, like, because she's always been the responsible one. I'm going to keep drumming that theme about being the responsible one, because I don't care how many siblings are in the family. I don't care where they reside in the world. Pat may not even reside around the corner from her mom, for all we know. She may be on the other side of the world, but still she's expected to pick up the slack. Well, I can tell everyone with us today that this chapter of elder care is going to raise like no other all of the buried family dynamics and issues that no one may have wanted to look at for years or even decades. Now, all of a sudden, it all comes back to the forefront. And I would want her to have that awareness. So no wonder, again, she's feeling the way she does. Now, in terms of attitudes. Last week, we were talking a lot about detachment and placing boundaries around your time and your life. Boundaries were not meant to be walls, but they were meant to be fences or gates. And they allow you to put some distance between, in this case, you and mom. Pat, you may be saying to yourself, well, I don't have that time or luxury. And I would say back with you, Okay, 
how don't you have the luxury unless you want to become a caregiver statistic in allowing your own health, physical, emotional, and mental to decline. As well, the action of initiate. In this case, what comes to mind is a family meeting. Now, we are going to be talking about a structure for that in coming shows because I know that bringing together, say, the brother and the sister in this case, who would only love to foist everything on to Pat, is not going to be an easy task. However, a conversation needs to happen sooner than later. Do you remember how I said, don't let yourself get sick? And also that I would have initiated certain vital conversations sooner if I could roll back the clock. I think this is one of them because brother and sister need to get involved and step up to the plate. I can think about clients and friends I've had that failed to do this and it was to their own chagrin. So we'll pick that up with that thread when we come back. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And just before the break, we were talking with, if, if you'd like, Dear Carol Ann and signed by Sick and Tired Pat, a letter where she was talking about how useless her brother and sister were in intervening with their parents' situation and what she's going to do because she's losing her life, basically. And we were suggesting that boundaries around her time and life will be important, that an initiation of a family meeting, much as it will be unpopular with the siblings who would like to foist care for mom at least onto Pat's shoulders singularly. It's not going to be easy, but it is going to be important to initiate sooner than later so that she doesn't become sick herself. And I wanted to add one thing before I move on to a little bit of a guided visualization designed to help you let go of some things. And that is the action point about trust, because I would also want to say, much as Pat may not want to hear it, that there is a real opportunity here for her. It's buried far beneath the surface, but the opportunity is how to heal and transform family dynamics so she steps out of the role of, you know, being the one responsible singularly for mom's care. This has happened for friends and colleagues and clients that I have worked with, and it can happen for you too, much as you don't possibly believe 
how that can be the case. But there are ways to structure these conversations, and we'll be diving into those as we go along. For now, I think that offering you a little bit of a guided visualization, which helps you to get breathing and grounded and then decide what attitudes and or actions might or might not be working for you anymore as it regards your caregiver role. And the purpose of this is to let you release things that are not serving your aims or you personally, like in terms of your health. And so those of you who are driving right now, well, you can't close your eyes, but you can imagine this visualization or you can listen to it afterwards. And those who are in a position to get a little bit grounded and relaxed, please do so. Because I start by inviting you to get into a comfortable position as much as you can and just to start a little bit with some breathing and start to take some gentle breaths in and out, nothing forced, but just tuning in and becoming aware of your breath. Just breathing naturally and easily. And as you do so, turning your attention to the soles of your feet and imagining there almost like roots that are growing out from the bottoms of your feet, like you were a tree planted, you know, just firmly into the ground with nice rich roots growing all around you. And this breathing and grounding is meant to just help you get into more of a relaxed state. So as you continue to breathe, now imagine yourself in the countryside on a beautiful summer's day, blue sky, sun shining brightly, warmth, and just feeling really great. You may be surrounded by a forest or water of some sort or mountains, but either way, you're in this countryside. And as you look around, you see just over there a parked hot air balloon. It's moored with its tethers right now, and you walk over, curious about what this hot air balloon is doing in the middle of the countryside on a gorgeous summer's day. Brilliantly colored balloon. And it almost seems like it's waiting for you because you hear the invitation to check it out. And you also start to realize the balloon is here for you to provide an opportunity to let go of some things as it regards your elder care situation. And you're like, really? All of a sudden, you're provided with some scraps of paper and a pen. And on each, you get to write down, gosh, what are some mindsets that I would just love to let go of? What are some actions that I feel now impressed to take? But also, are there some things that I've been doing or being that are no longer working for me? All is being invited to be placed into the basket of the balloon. So just allow yourself while you continue to breathe to contemplate what are you now ready to let go of as it regards your caregiving situation. And when we come back, we're going to help you to release that 
balloon and let these things go. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for staying with us to get the rest of this guided visualization that we were just in. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. And we were just at that hot air balloon, if you bring yourself back, and you were having the opportunity to write on scraps of paper that which you're ready to let go of as it regards your caregiving situation, because these may be attitudes or actions that are no longer working for you. And so now you see that you are able to start to untether the hot air balloon. So imagine yourself releasing each of the ropes. They're easy to come off each in turn, going around the basket. The flame is lit. And inside the basket are all of your letting goes. And so that last tether gets released. And the balloon starts up, up, up into the summer sky, rising high and up and blowing straight out across the countryside. You can see its colored balloon just starting to drift farther and farther into the horizon And as you watch what's being let go, it starts to become a smaller and smaller dot almost on the landscape, on the horizon. And soon it's out of sight because it has been released. And as you come to that realization, taking another few breaths, nice in and out, just easy. Notice how it feels to have let go of that which no longer serves you in your elder care or other caregiving relationships. 
and now returning to this time and space, allow me to give you a little peek into next week's call. It's going to be about setting positive intentions. And we are surely going to be distinguishing between intentions and goals. So goals are kind of like, you know, your New Year's resolutions that are well long ago broken by this time in the year. And instead, positive intentions for what you really want to have happen will carry you through. We'll also do an imagine if exercise to envision the possibility that you can actually create an effective parental relationship. I know you who are in the throes of this nightmare of life can hardly imagine a day when, you know, you don't want to curl up into a ball on some of your worst days. But mine was a journey from desperation to inspiration to hope. I know it's not an overnight process, but it can be done. And so, as you prepare to head into another laden week, please ponder just in the background which of the six focused actions of advocate, clarify, trust, initiate, observe, and innovate you wish to strengthen and which one is already strong for you. By the way, anything that you wish to let go of that didn't come to you during the hot air balloon, you can always put that on a scrap of paper and, or, or use your phone or your laptop, whatever you want, but just release that too, as if you're in the countryside all over again. Now, by the way, there are show archives at boldbravemedia.com forward slash shows forward slash the conscious caregiver separated by dashes. So you can always go back into those archives and listen under the self-help and wellness categories. So I always like to say to you, you've been strong too long. How about you dare to care with flair? We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And this is The Conscious Caregiver Show. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice. Right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company